in the tradition of trying to keep things as complicated as I can, welcome to bookshelf number three. Okay, because of course we are up very, very high again with the tripod, so <laughs> let's jump right in before everything just falls and I lose the camera and maybe the books and Miss Francie gets all, you know, skittish. Okay, let's keep going. So at the top of uh, bookshelf number three, we have uh, behind this set of books here, I actually have uh, some memoirs. And then as you can see here, I have Vampire Academy on display. Uh, as you can see here, I have the selection on display. You can't really see that. Um, I have a bunny there, which is it was literally only put there today. I should have moved it before we started filming because that was not there before today. But today is Easter Saturday that I'm filming this on. So tomorrow's Easter. I was given that just today. So <laughs> we'll let that go. I have a spice jar here of, um, I think it's like something interesting. Indian chai. I got that from my mother. Um, so I had that sitting next to Amina's voice uh, when Amina's voice was over there, but it's not there at the moment. Uh, and yeah, so now these books in the forefront that you can see, so these ones here and these ones here, these are some of the books that I had on my SAS list, or have on my SAS list that I haven't completed yet. For those of you who don't know, SAS stands for Serious About Series. Um, thank you again, Lizzie Fay, uh, Elizabeth from Lizzie Fay Loves Books. So I have divided my TBR uh, up for 2023 up into three SAS lists for series, and SAS list one goes on this shelf, SAS list two goes on this shelf, and I don't know if you can see SAS list three, you can kind of. SAS list three is, where's the pointer? There, this shelf right there. <laughs> okay, so let's remove the front books, these ones, and the bunny, and the, the chai, <laughs> and see what we can see behind. Let's make the reveal of what's going on behind SAS list number one. You know what, well, before I do that, I'm not one to shy away from other things that you can see. Here in the corner, I actually um, have a picture of a, a hottie. <laughs> and uh, this that you can almost see is um, Jared Padalecki, who plays Dean in um, Gilmore Girls. And then this little thing right here says, shine bright like a diamond, but you can hardly see it. And... Do we do a slight turn, or will everything just die if I do a slight turn? There we go, there we go. Okay, enough said. Alright, now I'll move those books. I forgot to mention one more thing, the Lord of the Books, the Lord of the Books himself, Mr. Buppy, right here, that's Mr. Buppy, my plush puppy. Um, yeah, so, um, he's a puppy. I changed the first P for Paul to a B for Bob and call him Buppy. Very funny um, side joke, side story, slash joke, true story, but still funny. Anyway, um, is that my father likes to make um, you know, sandwiches and certain sandwiches he actually refers to as being Buppy. And so I used to... Uh, when I was younger, say to him, you're not eating my puppy. I've had puppy for a very long time. Oh my gosh. Um, Buppy's got me through some very tough times, but he has currently been promoted to, he has been promoted to Lord of the Books. So we're going to move Buppy, move those books, and then you'll finally see what I've been talking about for two minutes. <laughs> Et voila. So moving the books aside, we can see that we this section here is memoirs. Then we have the display book of Vampire Academy, so book one, and then the rest of them. And the display book of the selection and the rest of the selection, as well as some more Kiera Cass books. So the third last one, which is the one there, is the Siren. And then under the Siren, I have the Betrayed and the... Yeah, betrothed and the betrayed, I think that's the wrong way around. But anyway, so while this may look like it's just a, the selection series, it's basically a pile of Kira Cass books. Um, yeah, I decided to display the Vampire Academy series, or as best I can, considering that I'm also having my SAS list one on this bookshelf, um, because while the Vampire Academy series, as far as a star rating for me for the... For the plot of the entire series was very much up and down. I have three and five stars. Three stars, five stars, three stars, five stars. It's really ridiculous. Um, I went through the ringer with that series. But the reason why I decided to display this series is because I actually love the editions a lot. And it took a lot for me to get these editions because the editions we have in Australia, again, are not these editions. So now I'm back on American editions and how amazing they are. 
just a bit of a visual representation of the books, how they look when they face out. I honestly think they even look better facing out, but I just don't have the room. But if I did, if I had like massive bookshelves, I would definitely display them facing out. I just, something about the v, the way the V interlocks with the A and the, the backgrounds, I just love it. So yeah, there you go. Just wanted to show you. I also just very quickly wanted to put the memoirs out here for you so that you could see them as well. I'm celebrating the memoirs because I don't read non-fiction. This is the closest I get to non-fiction. Um, I'm a fiction reader. That's just the way it is. But I love all of the memoirs that I've read. Uh, and that's because my hot tip if you want to read a memoir is pick a memoir that is written by someone that you love or that you have a deep interest in. And all of these lovely women, is, I'm just realising I don't have one man here, a, one male memoir, although that could change this year because um, Anthony Kalia has released his memoir. I am so excited and he audibly narrated it himself, but I'll get over that because I don't have the book right now. But just trust me, I'm very, 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 very excited about that and I'm going to squeeze it onto a TBR very soon, wherever I can, because my TBRs are very but anyway, um, so just going in order, just going across. So this is Unstoppable My Life So Far by Maria Sharapova. I'm a huge tennis fan, so um, really wanted to read that book, and I enjoyed it. It was great. Um, Cancer Schmancer by Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher. I need to read Enter Whining, but I loved her from The Nanny. I just love her as a person, uh, let alone being an actress. Uh, Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. In shelves down there, <laughs> I actually have um, Lauren Graham's latest memoir, which will end up going up uh, with this one as well. Then The Diva Rules by Michelle Visage. She's the uh, one of the uh, judges on RuPaul's Drag Race. I love her. What she's done for the LGBTIQ plus community is huge. Take a moment to look her up and you'll see what I mean. She is such a great beacon um, for anyone in the LGBTIQ plus community. And then uh, Home by Dear Julie Andrews, who if ever there was a mentor that I looked up to who is blissfully unaware of it, and bless her for being blissfully unaware of it, it would be Dame Julie Andrews. I just, I would love to be her. I I learned so much from, so much about being a human being from watching her and um, learning about her, and then also on top of that, having the opportunity to read her memoirs. So yeah, that's what I would recommend. If you want to get into reading memoirs, Pick a memoir of someone that you either want to learn more about or someone you already love anyway, because you're going to have more likely a chance that you're going to enjoy them. And I loved each and every one of these books. I think I gave Kansas Mancha, Kans Kansas Schmancer, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting stuck around the way that Fran Drescher words things, Kansas Schmancer, four stars, because it, I thought it was going to be funny and it was actually a lot more serious than I thought it would be. But otherwise... I enjoyed all these. Oh, and I think Michelle Visage's book didn't get five stars either, but that's because there's um, self-help in the book as well, which really threw me off. Um, but all of them received high ratings. None of them received three stars. Let's put it that way. And now Sass List Wine is back where it was. So these are just series that I'm in the middle of at the moment. On the very left, I have the Amina's uh, Voice Duology. I have completed that, but I haven't done a review on it yet. Once I've done a review on that duology, then that will be moved to my contemporary section. Uh, then I have uh, Flowers and Foul Play. Um, sorry, I'm not looking, am I? It's the third one, that one. Flowers and Foul Play by Amanda Flower, book one in her Magic Garden Mystery series. The next two, these two, are the um, Jenny Hahn, To All the Boys I Love Before, two of the three books in that trilogy. I'm reading the third one this month. And then we've got A Friend for Hire, which you can see outwardly displayed, which has helped me a lot. I, I This cover is absolutely gorgeous. I'll turn it around in just a moment. Uh, and then over here, I have my Ian Rob Wright uh, Damien Verse books. So I've got two books I want to show you, so I'll quickly turn them around. Okay, I'm going to do this really quickly because I'm scared that the ones on the right are going to fall over. So A Plus One for Murder, uh, there's your cover. It's gorgeous. It has got me through a lot of stressful situations, believe it or not, looking at that cover, as do a lot of cozies. If you want some just therapeutic beautifulness, then I highly recommend picking up A Cozy Mystery because the books are really cozy. Well, the cozy 
the the cozy mysteries on the cozy side of the scale are extremely cozy, but the covers, just looking at the covers, can provide the best free therapy in my mind. I'm saying that for me, it does, because I can be really stressed and then look at the cover of a plus one for murder and suddenly just feel very calm. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I just, I love cozy covers. This book, The Housemates by Ian Rob Wright, we were talking earlier um, in part two about the inheritance games and how I wanted to DNF that. And then I looked for a book that was going to fulfill the purpose of what I thought the inheritance games was going to do. That was this book, The Housemates. I read it and it got an overwhelming five stars. One of the single best horrors I've ever read. If you want a horror, horror, horror to the umpteenth degree, that is, that is the book that you read. If you don't, want to be scared out of your mind, don't read that book. <laughs> but if you do, that's the one you read. Okay, shelf two and shelf three. So shelf two is my SAS list number two. So SAS list number one that we're looking up up here is my to be completed by the end of the year. But my SAS list number two is more of a to make as much headway as I can type of list. So facing outwards, I here have Every Heart a Doorway by Sienna Maguire. Uh, that is book number one in the Wayward Children series. The covers of this series are truly beautiful. So those are books one, two, and three. Uh, one, Every Hard Doorway, two, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, and three, Beneath the Sugar Sky. Um, yeah, the covers are just absolutely insanely gorgeous. Um, and I just, I need the whole collection. Whether I like the books or not, I want the whole collection because every book in this series is just absolutely artistically beautiful. Um, but yeah, I've read book one and book two. Have I started book three and then shelved it, uh, by which I mean I put it back on the shelf. I have not DNF'd it. I just didn't have time for it in the month I was reading it. But I will get back to it. But uh, yeah, that is the... Uh, Wayward Children series that I have so far on Cess List 2. Not really a lot else to pull out from this shelf. Um, so I have there, you can see it a little bit, um, Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library Book 1, the Lemoncello series, Mr. Lemoncello, sorry, series. I do want to read more. It's just that Sass List 1 is my priority, which is my reasoning for all, almost all the books on this particular shelf that I haven't continued on with that series because I'm prioritizing with Sass List, Sass List 1. But if I wasn't, best believe that uh, the Mr. Lemoncello series would be one I would be prioritizing with this year because it was fantastic book one. Uh, Evermore by Alison Noel with the really creepy dark cover with the girl and the roses. Yeah, fantastic psychic book. Really, really, really well done. Um, then we have an air freshener in the middle. I don't know. I have the air freshener there. It sits there as kind of a divider for me. So we're just going to move on from that. Um, then here we have the box set of The Chronicles of Narnia, which is a buddy read that I'm doing at the moment. Despite the fact that it's on SAS list too, I offered it up as a buddy read on my Discord and we a number of us are buddy reading it together. So I got the box set in advance and I'm happily reading it. And then we have two books at the end End, which you can see one but not the other that I actually haven't read yet and yet they're sitting on this shelf as a representative for that series which is Midnight for Charlie Bone. Midnight for Charlie Bone, uh, that one, and this one is a uh, a couple of different books from uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes series. Um, I started Midnight for Charlie Bone last year, and I got maybe a chapter or two in and then shelved it. Uh, again, just a timing thing. Um, but yeah, still want to keep reading it. So um, yeah, that's what I'll do. And as for the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, I want to show you the spine. Hard to see here, but gold sprayed edges. Oh my goodness, I can't part with this book. Whether I love the book or not, I haven't read it yet. I just can't part with it. The book itself is just so beautiful. On to shelf number three then, and this is SAS list number three, and um, sorry, no it's not. <laughs> it was SAS list number three, but now it's not. And I just realized I need to move some things out of the frame, so we're just going to let that go and pretend like that didn't happen, and this was a seamless trans transition. Okay, shelf number three, everyone. <laughs> shelf number three is my TBR shelf. Um, So as with shelf number two, how I have the air con- the, did I call that an air conditioner last time? air freshener. The air freshener here is a divider. I also have uh, this trilogy here, the uh, Divergent Trilogy, which is backwards. And I don't know why, how odd. But anyway, um, the Divergent Trilogy are uh, there as a divider with four as well. So books on 
this side <laughs> of the Divergent trilogy, uh, books that I either have read or am going to read in April this month, and books on yeah, <laughs> this side uh, of the Divergent trilogy, and four are books I plan to read in May, and yeah, shelf number three just kept, became my TBR shelf. Yeah, so the only thing I can really do is discuss uh, the Divergent stuff with you because almost everything else I haven't read, and I don't really want to talk too much about Zodiac Academy and uh, The Getaway, even though I've read them, because I only just read them. So I don't feel like I have enough perspective on them. I only read them within the space of the last week or so. So we'll leave them out of it, but I'll quickly show you Divergent, uh, that trilogy. And yes, of course, naturally, this trilogy is going to come with another one of those Mr. France he needed his US edition stories. So buckle in and grab a nice warm drink. Okay. Now, um, look, we have a, I'm just going to say it again, we have a horrible UK edition here in Australia for Divergent. I don't like it. I don't like it. I really, really, really don't like it. And I'm sure that there are Americans, American readers watching these videos of mine and going, Mr. Fancy, you don't like the UK versions. We hate the American ones. And that's absolutely fine. You have every right to hate the American editions. I just don't. I mean, argue with me on how this book, Divergent, is not one of the most singularly beautiful books you've ever seen. That edition is absolutely gorgeous. Now try and track down the UK edition. Compare the two and tell me, tell me this one is worse. Seriously. Insurgent is okay. Look, I appreciate the tree, but I don't like the colour. It just, I don't know. It's icky. <laughs> I don't want to say icky because it sounds so immature, but it is. It's really icky. <laughs> um, but the book was okay, but the cover I don't really like. But I love the book for Allegiant. And that's the really funny thing. I got this box set because I, of how much I love the Divergent cover. I don't like the Insurgent cover at all because it's icky, but I love the book. I love the Allegiant cover, but I don't like the book. No, I don't like the uh, book three. I don't like the way it ended. So there you go. Isn't that funny that it's always one but not the other? Insurgent, don't like the cover. Love the book in Allegiant. Really love the cover. Really don't like the book. Don't want to use the H word. No, we'll say don't like the book. And then above that here I have displayed four because in Divergent, that one, we follow Triss Pryor, who ends up meeting a love interest whose name is Four. In this book, we get to know uh, Four's life story, the background of Four before he meets Triss, Triss, and then while he is with Triss. So even though it's more commonly recognised as a trilogy, in fact, uh, it is a quartet. If I can hold this thing correctly, a quartet. One, two, three really hard to do with the camera. Okay, let's move on. And now we're on the floor. Okay, again, in the spirit of true transparency, this is my dressing gown, so don't worry about that. Okay, um, so this uh, shelf, shelf number four, is my um, SAS list three. So it is longer see on the Left-hand side is SAS list three. So it is longer series on my SAS list that I just like to see where I can get to, give them a go. Um, so we have from the left here, these two are the uh, Campus and Criminals books, one and two by Tonya Kappas. Then we have the first four books in the Food and Cocktail Mystery series by... Lee and Hollis, and then we have the first six books in the Coffeehouse Mystery series by Cleo Coyle. Um, they all just so happen to be cosies. I think either all, if not most, of the series on my third SAS list are cosies anyway. It just worked out that way. These series are incredibly long. I think most of them have like 16 or 19 books in the series, so when I'm saying long, I'm not saying six or seven. I'm saying like 16 or 19 books in the series. It's incredibly long. And then on this side, I have my stand list for 2023. So that those are books that I read in 2023 that are standalones. And so far I have a six there. Why do I feel like I've actually read more? Oh, because I keep forgetting that I never purchased Sorry Not Sorry by Naya Rivera, but I did read it. Um, and in the true spirit of Naya Rivera, sorry, but I'm not sorry I didn't purchase it. It's It was a good book and I enjoyed it. I listened to the audio edition. I thought it was great, but I just didn't feel the need to purchase it. So there you go. I read it on a whim. It was good for what it was. But yeah, that's basically what we have here. 
Um, I don't know if there's really anything that I need to pull out to discuss with you about it. Um, I will say, and you can notice this without me pulling out the books, the Campers and Criminals books, as you can see, they're a lot taller than these ones, taller and thinner. I actually prefer them. I know I'm not trying to do this stereotype thing of thinner is better because I don't necessarily believe that thinner is better. But in this particular case, the reason I do is because they are floppy, which I can't show you until... I pull them out, so floppy, floppy, rigid, rigid, <laughs> floppy versus rigid, which you can't really see, but yeah, big difference. I wish they were all this size because it's so much easier to read, where this is a mass market um, paperback edition of Cozies, and they're so much harder to read physically. But I will say one thing I appreciate about the smaller, um, the shorter height is I know just by looking at the shorter height that they're Cozies, because I don't have any books that are that short compared to my Cozies. So as soon as I see that it's a short book, I go, oh yeah, it's a Cozy. It's just a matter of which one is it? Which, which series is this Cozy from? <laughs> But yeah, so I appreciate that, but yeah. Um, yeah, trinkets. Okay, so I have a um, thingy, which I should know what that is. <laughs> no, I do. I do know what it is. It's just the word has temporarily escaped me. The chakras. A chakra incense holder. I'm not a fan of incense, but I do love this incense holder, and I love the chakras and stuff like that. Won't go on talking about that here, but uh, yeah, I think it's just really beautiful, and I love having it in my bookshelf, and this is like a treasure chest thingy, and there's something in there that is very personable to me that I'm not going to show on camera, but it is very personable to me, and it makes sense for me to have it on my bookshelf, so that's why that is there. Okay, let's move on to the next shelf. Going down. Do, 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 do. You ever seen Are You Being Served? Instead of going up, it's going down. Do 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 do. Okay, this is shelf number one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is my TBR shelf, my shelf of books that I've had for a considerable while. Some of them are a lot longer, significantly longer than others, um, and just books that I should get to and that I don't and I really need to have a goal and I'm thinking in June that I'll add it as a goal for me to at least read one book from my TBR shelf because some of these have been here for way too freaking long, okay? <laughs> um, so these two over here are Minolima books on the end, the green ones, are Minolima books that my mother bought me. I have a whole host of other Minolima books, but I've lent them out to my mother at the moment. She's having a look at them. Um, when she buys them for me, they're sealed up, and uh, she didn't really get a lot of time to look at them um, when I received them from her. So I dropped them off with her and said, Mum, take your time, have a look through them, I trust you. And uh, she knows that I do because, I mean, I'm very... I'm very precious with my books, and everyone knows this, but I trust my mum, so <laughs> she's looking at them at the moment. But yeah, we have the Tales of the Jungle Book and Peter Pan uh, over there for those. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I plan to read very soon, actually, um, but I only purchased that this year, or it was late last year, one of the two. Like, it was either December last year or January this year. Um, then Beneath the Sugar Sky, you saw that earlier. Rhythm of War, I have had on these bookshelves, I'm embarrassed to say, I think it's been about two and a half years, which is ridiculous, even if you ask me. Then we have an omnibus of Jane Austen. So I have Northanger Abbey, uh, Persuasion and Emma, all by Jane Austen, which is fantastic. I had a time when I wanted to get into Jane Austen. I still haven't done it. This book is the pain in the tuchus bookshelf. I mean, when we're going to stop calling it bookshelf number five. We're just going to call it the pain in the tuchus bookshelf. Because anytime I look at these books, I'm like, I've been wanting to read these for years. I have no excuse. Why are they not on my TPR? What is going on? And it annoys me. It's not pressure for me to read, but it just annoys me that even though I plan my TBR, why don't I just put them on my TBR. Come on, Mr. Rancy. <laughs> um, this one is uh, Call It What You Want by Bridget Cameron. As I say, I love Bridget Cameron's contemporaries, and this is another contemporary she wrote. I think this is the last contemporary she wrote before she went into fantasy. Princess, Ga Princess Gambit, we looked at before. Stay Gold is that um, trans book I was talking to you about in the LGBTQ plus section, and now we're going to pop that next book out. 
The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich. Oh my goodness me. If ever there is a book on this particular shelf that pains me more than the rest, it is this one. I attempted to read this last year or the year before, one of the two, and I was distracted while reading it. I missed three very big nuggets of information, and unfortunately this book doesn't retell you there's those nuggets again, so you, if you miss something you can't catch up later. Um, and so I was re-listening and re-listening to a chapter over and over again, and ended up shelving it because I wasn't in the right headspace for it. I have been saying since I shelved it that I need to get back to this book. I need to get back to this book. Someone needs to just put the pressure on me and be like, Miss Francie, if you don't put this on your May TBR, I'm gonna... Mm. <laughs> Even though you could see earlier, my main TV is already stacked, but seriously, I need to read The Foxhole Court, and the moment it's on a TBR, watch me celebrate that book. <laughs> Uh, it was great. The book was fine. It was just I missed too many things. But yeah, if there's a book that's driving me absolutely nuts that it's still on my to be read, it's The Foxhole Court. And then just a number of other books. Um, I have the Ta A Tale of Magic, uh, that one, by Chris Colfer. Some Enid Blyton books that I have from childhood. Stuart Little that I have from childhood is that thin yellow one. Um, some Famous Five books. I used to love Famous Five. I was obsessed back in the day from childhood. The Outsiders, um, which I planned to read a while ago, then lent it out to my stepsister, got it back recently, and will read it one day as a classic. City of Girls. Um, I may give that a go at some point. It's been a recent addition to my bookshelf. It was uh, another family member owned it and they didn't want to read it. So I grabbed it from the hands and said, okay, I'll give it a go and we'll see. <laughs> and then Your Welcome Universe, if you've been following my channel, you know the deal with that one. I'm exclusively listening to audiobooks at the moment and Your Welcome Universe did not have an audiobook. So sadly it was shelved. And now we're literally on floor level. Um, so this is very uncomfortable for Mr. Fancy, who hardly ever goes on floor level, but that's okay, I'll do it for you all. Okay, so this is overflow, stuff that just didn't fit into my other shelves. I have uh, some cozies here. Uh, Flip for Murder, Death in Castle Dark, Two Hell Better Come Back, which Two Hell Better Come Back I really should have unhauled. I'm getting annoyed by myself that I did not hold this <laughs> book. I just wasn't a fan. A lot of people loved To Hell Better Come Back. I just was not one of them. Up to No Gouda, I do love and will probably be added to a sass list for me for next year if I have enough room because I probably won't. But if I do, because I did love that book. Uh, and a Charmed book, um, which is actually the oldest book on my bookshelves at the moment because I read that as a child. I used to love the TV show Charmed. And then the battered book at the end is uh, Helen Keller's Teacher, which a friend lent out to me, and I just haven't had the opportunity to give it back to her yet. These books over here, we have um, Margaret Pedersen Haddix's book that I can't read from here. Just Ella is what it's called. And then we have Chance to Fly by... Um, Stacey Davidowitz, I think is her name, and then Morris Gleitman's Water Wings, which actually Water Wings is probably the oldest one because I read that when I was in primary school, the blue one here, which if you're American is the Australian term primary school, is the Australian term for elementary school. This is a whole Beatrix Potter um, box set, which I love, and I found it at a garage sale. I paid like 10 bucks for it, which is a bargain, $10 for this one. I'm saying bucks, which is an Australian slang term, $10 uh, for this, which is incredibly cheap for Beatrix Potter. And one day I'm going to just probably put it on a TBR, a future TBR, like in 2025 or something, and have all of the books on a monthly TBR and just get through all of them. That'll be a whole lot of fun, but just haven't gotten to it yet. So there you go. And now to wrap things up with a very quick pan around bookshelf number one. Bookshelf. Excuse my creaky floors, number two. And a bookshelf. And the hotties. <laughs> a bookshelf, number three. And there you have it. My, and Mr. Buppy, of course. And Mr. Fuego, of course. <laughs> that is my fun of checking out the bookshelves. I hope you had a great time, everyone. This was, this was fun. All right, I'm going to let you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. As Mr. Buppy, Mr. Fuego, and I always say, please do be kind and love one another and spread your sparkling energy or fire energy or buppy energy all throughout the world. <laughs> and until next time, happy reading. Bye, everyone.